Alright guys, Frank Valkyria here. Let's go check together this other video of Incredibly Average. Yesterday I did some commentary to another video of Incredibly Average right there, new uncensored audio. This guy, honestly, mega thumbs up, already for 2-3 years has compiled all the evidence, incredible investigative journalist. I have no idea how Johnny Depp lost in the UK the trial when this was already out go check this right now support incredibly average I watched the whole video and I'm just going to share with you this last part and this is the incident that happened in the in the penthouse in downtown LA I was absolutely astonished when I heard the deposition a few days ago when uh, Amber Heard claimed that she was battered, punched, basically massacred, like pummeled behind the head, like hit with the, with the fist with the cast on, like being dragged on the stairs for one part of the apartment or two, and then repeatedly like punched and get a headbutt. And I was absolutely astonished to see that uh, she basically went the day after to the James Corden show with no sign of basically anything. This man right here puts all together the what probably he is an elaborate, I would say maybe hoax. I'm just speculating because you know we we are not judging anybody here. We're just commenting, but he puts together and this at the end is the point of view his point of view after he put all together the evidence that you can watch in full on the other video. Let's go on his video. I'll link it below. Well, allow me to explain how I see it using evidence, testimony, footage, and a little common sense. I know this has been long, I but bear coffee. with me. I'll make this as quick as I can, but I got to do it right. Keep in mind, this is what Man, I'm you're awesome. Happened, I'm just saying Based on all that. the facts available, and there are a lot of facts out there at this point. Saturday, May 21st, 2016. After Amber and her friend's poorly executed hoax attempt failed, they all sat down while speaking with Amber's lawyer, Samantha Spector, and with her guidance came up with an alternate version of what happened that night. Basically, since Johnny left, telling Amber that he wanted a divorce, more on that in a second, Amber, her friends, and her lawyer had to act fast. So she threatened Johnny and his highly valued privacy with lies about public allegations of abuse, unless, of course, he gave in to her demands. You see, on Monday, May 23rd, Amber, knowing Johnny intended to divorce her, and most likely with the advice of her lawyer, beat him to it. She filed, citing irreconcilable differences, while sending this, well, let's just call it what it looks like, an extortion letter to Johnny's team. She demanded three of the multi-million dollar penthouses with all expenses and utilities paid for, including the one Raquel and Josh Drew had been living in rent-free, she also demanded the Range Rover and $50,000 a month with such monthly expenses like 10000 a month for gifts, vacation. Did they forget this? Did they forget to show this in the trial? ...and entertainment and 2000 a month for clothes. These demands were given a four-day deadline to be signed over by Johnny by Friday, May 27th. And that was just to keep her quiet so they could move on with the actual divorce proceedings wow. where more money and a Brutal. more complete divorce settlement could be discussed. So here's how I see it. Plan A. Threaten her victim with public humiliation in hopes he will give her everything she wants by giving a ridiculously fast deadline. In the meantime, she lived her life, going to parties, drinking, dinner, hanging with friends and secret lovers, you know, just everyday stuff, walking around seemingly confident that this would work making sure to cover her face in photos just in case the hoax ever had to be taken that far, but not really banking on it. Also not banking on what surveillance videos, neighbors, building staff, and friends would testify to seeing or not seeing. Plan B, try to win Johnny back, or at least sweet talk him and blame others for the extortion letter in hopes that he'll sign it in time. That's what a narcissist will do. I say this was plan B because that's what Amber attempted. Just hours after this late night footage you saw, Amber texts Johnny early in the morning on May 25th. In these texts, Amber attempts to play the good guy by throwing her lawyers under the bus, blaming them for the threats of domestic abuse and the letter with the quick deadline. 
stating that she wasn't aware of it and he could take as long as he wants. She even preys on his privacy again by saying that she filed and it is private and would most likely stay that way unless he filed as well, which, the way I see it, is attempting to take away any ability for him to do anything except take her back or sign her privacy demands. She says things like they can do or undo this as they see fit and that they love each other. That she thought he filed and that he said he was going to before saying goodbye. You know, also, I'm adding my commentary here, you know, otherwise uh, not much purpose in just showing the video. And uh, I have to say that after watching many of those videos, this seems like it was, and I'm just speculating, right? I'm not judging anybody, I'm speculating, but it seems this was highly calculated all along. And especially when it seemed clear that he wanted to divorce and therefore a lot of privileges will come to an end with that. Essentially blaming him for her filing, but also admitting that it was Johnny who decided the marriage was over, not her, and that he didn't leave while screaming and breaking everything he could while she cowered under Raquel's protection as they had lied about in their declarations. Yeah. She ends by saying she is sorry if she hurt him and she has nothing but love for him. Weird, not fear, not disdain, not bitterness, instead nothing but love. So the story that she resolved to leave him, not true at all. She was actually attempting to get him back while also painting herself as an unwilling, unknowing participant in this abuse and extortion hoax, in hopes if he did end up leaving her, he would see her as a loving, caring wife and still hopefully give her everything she demanded because, well, she had already filed and the letter had been sent, so her hands were tied, right? Well, she was right about one thing. If Johnny filed anything, privacy was out the window. So that's exactly what he did. He confirmed he wanted a divorce by filing his response and request for the dissolution of the marriage. Amber wasn't getting what she demanded, nor was she getting her victim back. So she and her friends' lavish lifestyles were about to change. Right. Even though she and her friends had laid the groundwork for the abuse hoax, I don't think they ever imagined they would need to take it that far or make full use of it. Man, this is what I've said. This is what I've said already. And I didn't even know all this stuff. To me, all of this stuff is new. Most of this stuff is new. And by just watching that, I thought she probably started in a certain way thinking like, okay, I'm going to try to get some privileges back or something out of this. And they just didn't realize that then you have to go full in and continue and now it's too late now it's too late their image it's ruined and especially her uh, she has to go the old way you know and i've said this before she cannot afford to lose you know Sometimes that's why the overacting in the deposition a talkative alert and confident looking amber and this footage of a slump shouldered quiet and somber amber came the news that it was indeed over, and Johnny was not caving to her demands, and she no longer had control of him. This meant the only option she had left was to go forward with the abuse hoax. Enter photographer friend Amanda de Cadenet and makeup artist friend Melanie Inglesis. To help sneak out a seemingly out of it, Amber heard so that the media, who were undoubtedly piling up outside the building, wouldn't get any photos of her uninjured face until they figured out the next step in the plan. This is so incredibly important, you know, they were in and covering her just to make sure that just whatever day after here the alleged incident happened, where she was pummeled on the floor with punches and headbutts and whatnot, and to me still, if I understand correctly, the same day that probably she was punched with a cast or something. But anyway, I don't know if you're aware of being punched in the face, receiving a headbutt, or being punched in the back of your head. Literally, you can suffer like a head concussion that probably can send you to the hospital for a week or so, and they have to keep you under observation. This is serious stuff. I mean... Like, there is a reason why in box, boxing match and everything, they don't allow, like, kicks or, uh, uh, you know, or punches behind the head, you know? It's freaking deadly. And uh, to see, like, this just a day after or so, like, 
clearly with no visible sign of bruising and then all of a sudden a day or one after after she filed or she was here at the court whatever like filing this thing um she shows up with a, a, a little kind of pinkish red mark here on the cheek that's not how punches work and i know some are already thinking well maybe melanie was there to help cover the bruises with makeup so amber's alleged injuries wouldn't show and to that i have a couple of points if they really wanted to help Amber hide her face, even in addition to makeup, why is her hair still pulled up? Because we know what it looks like when Amber doesn't want her face to be seen. Just ask James Franco. Plus, <laughs> this is Whitney, Melanie, and Amanda arriving shortly before they all left together. Notice how they have nothing in hand aside from cell phones, keys, or a small wallet. Now, don't you think Melanie wouldn't take for granted that Amber would just happen to have all the makeup she would possibly need to completely cover an injury if that is actually what she was called over there to do? Or would Melanie bring her own kit like a professional makeup artist so that she knows she has everything needed right then and there? Yeah. Pictures of alleged inconsistent injuries would have to be produced, none of which time stamped or with metadata. Any postings of Amber happy and lively from days earlier had to be deleted. She would have to make sure the people who would eventually testify to not seeing her with injury saw some form of injury the same day she would be paraded out the front door of the L.A. County Court by her lawyer for a wave of media to see. Bruise? Check. Jewelry removed and hair straightened with a long black funeral dress for added sympathy? Check. Sad, confused, and tired-eyed expression? Check. Best friend ducking down so the media can get a good shot of you crying. Well, for a little bit anyway. <laughs> Check. Almost immediately, new articles ran with her allegations. Social media platforms were calling for a boycott of Johnny's new Alice in Wonderland film. Both celebrities' names were trending. Amber's for support, and Johnny's for those calling to cancel him. And just like that, overnight, things changed. The very next day, after meeting with her lawyer, her alleged injury was completely gone. Her somber demeanor vanished, and she cackled, clutching Raquel closely as they laughed maniacally down the sidewalk. The hoax had worked. When she couldn't just quietly... Wow, man. When, I, when you look at this in this light, you really realize, like, the premeditation some people put into something, you know? And... Um... To me, there is honestly, there is, we are, we are also here doing speculation eh, for the sake of not uh, getting in trouble or something, but it seems very clear. It seems very clear. Privately control him to give in to her demands when she couldn't win him back. When it was obvious he had had enough and was done, she shifted gears, played the part of the victim, wrongfully painted him as the abuser for nearly three years and by stepping on the backs of real victims in the wake of the Time's Up and Me Too movements attempted to ruin him. Johnny denied then and continues to deny Amber's allegations of abuse. He has opened up about the damage this has done personally, professionally, and emotionally and has been mocked for it. Mocked by the... Look at those assholes. Look at them. Like, like those people, they will have to give a public apology you know they should give a public apology Andrew Parkett, Elizabeth Bain, Brosephine Wires, Kyle Donaldson, eh? Ollie right there look at them immediately jumping on the wagon of the Me Too slashing and uh, accusing a man like basically ruining a man before watching any evidence like evidence like this self-appointed seekers of righteousness and truth mocked by those who would rather kick a man while he's down for a good laugh and social media likes than listen to what he has to say exactly but i can see the conversation shifting a conversation that in already then yeah look at that armstrong williams eugene Jew, md very good johnny depp is a survivor of domestic abuse from amber heard but because he's a male nobody bothered to consider the evidence and nearly everyone on social media attacked him to ruin his life journalists should be ashamed about skipping the evidence just to fit their narrative eugene gu i couldn't agree more and uh this is really sad 
Hollywood hijack of the Me Too movement by Arit Said. Reports have surfaced which have challenged the truthfulness of actor Amber Heard's allegation. Unfortunately, actor Johnny Depp has already been deemed guilty in the court, car, court of public opinion. Sorry. Wow. And this is already two or three years ago, right? And uh, she doesn't seem like to let go of those lies. The acting and the extremity is getting even worse. To me, the wor like the most clear part was just the allegation of being punched with a cast in the face and uh, being pummeled, her words, pummeled behind the head. And like, I really I have no words for that, really, seriously. Like if you have ever received a headbutt, you know how long it's going to take for that to go away if they almost broke your nose you're gonna be swollen for weeks there is no way you show up with a little bit of redness on a cheek and you go to a tv show the night after with absolutely not a scratch or swollen face there is no way there's just no way i i, I really don't i wonder why this is not considered as evidence i, I have no idea all victims and it's encouraging with that i'm gonna wrap this video up Thanks so much, everyone, for those of you who have kept an open mind this whole time. I hey, I want to say thank you. Go check his channel, Incredibly Average, really doing a service, really doing a service for the truth. And this is all we ask. Guys, go subscribe also to my channel. Go check the other videos. Always spread love. Always spread love. Ciao.